meal, homemade breakfast. Boom shark water. God, guys, what have I started? You've got no idea the things I've been up to. Uh, I do apologise for not doing a, a video recently, um, but I've got so many things to tell you. Please carry on watching because, oh my God, um, I said a few weeks ago I'm start, going to start building some aluminium frames, and uh, I want to show you some of the progress that I've gone on and how far we've gotten with it and whatnot. Uh, first of all, so this little beauty here has been a recent purchase. Uh, I'm totally spent up now by the way, but uh, I've gotten quite a lot. So this thing here is a, a Sherman, it's a AC 200 amp TIG welder. Uh, I'll turn it on to give you an idea what it looks like. See there, you see all the armatures, it's got clearance and things like that. Um, it does work really, really well. Just turn it off, it's a little bit noisy. I'm not an expert TIG welder, uh, I use a MIG welder at work, so I've had to learn a fair bit. Um, but I am getting the hang of it, so I'll show you a little bit of me welding and you'll see the progress of that. Uh, I'm just having a look now and I can see a gas bottle. Some of the things I've had to buy recently is a gas bottle. So when I bought my TIG welding set, I paid like an extra £100 to get an argon gas bottle. And what happened is um, I ran out of gas within like three days. And uh, I rang around all the local companies. When I had a MIG at home last time, uh, a gas bottle was only like 10 or 15 pound, it wasn't very expensive. Then I went to try and get the new Argon gas bottle or you know, refill the old bottle or the new bottle that I just bought and nobody would refill it. So I have a right nightmare and I've had to go and buy a bottle that's cost us 120 pound just for the Argon gas bottle. Like everything aluminium is costing us loads and loads of money. It's literally like no word of a lie about 10 times more expensive than uh, steel. So I'm spent up, I've had to buy some special tools to do this job, um, I need a shed and I need a lathe, um, they are the two main things, uh, but I've simply run out of money, so I'm quite ashamed of this, but I'm going to turn the camera around and I'm going to show you my workshop, my, yeah, my workshop. So just carrying on with the tools, you can see here this is the frame, I'm not going to get into that just yet, so this is some other tools. I've had a buy in the last video that you'll have seen is using a jigsaw to cut the aluminium with and honestly it just didn't do the job. So I've had to go and buy a proper band saw. This thing's cool. It's the best tool other than the weld set. It's the best tool I've ever had. Uh, absolutely love that thing. However, I did cut aluminium with it when I first got it and I thought, oh, that cuts really good. I wonder if it cuts steel. Lesson learned, guys. Don't put steel into a little bandsaw like this. It totally destroyed the blade and cost us some more money to buy a new blade. Next tool. So this thing here, it's very homemade, but it saved us uh, £359. And uh, what this is, I've had to put some bends in the frame. So what this here, here is, is my little brake press. Just tighten up the, the valve and you'll see this. Oh, I love this tool as well. This. It's £379, it costs us less than 20 quid to make. This jacks up literally, goes against this blade here, and uh, nips the metal up. You get any angle you want. Could probably do it putting a couple of springs in here, but I'm used to pull this down again. But uh, woohoo! This is made out of an old motocross stand, by the way. You might have seen it in some of your old videos. Right, next tool. <laughs> so, this one I've had a little while, my little pillar drill, and uh, it gets used, uh, yes, it's in my workshop. It's just another tool, very, very handy. Uh, another one that I absolutely love. Some more of the things that I've had to buy. 
See these uh, aluminium welding rods? Um, I bought aluminium box section. Uh, you can see here I bought 100 aluminium welding rods. So I built a couple of frames of the 100 rods. Uh, no, I didn't even get uh, practicing out the way. So what else we've got on here? We've got some cutting discs and we've got some uh, electrodes for the TIG welder. Uh, I had to buy some special these things for the little I don't even know what they are, pipe connectors for the regulator because gas box is under the regulator, so I buy a, a regulator too. Uh, we've got some what's in here? Oh yeah, router bits. So apparently you can use wood bits as long as they are carbide tipped. Uh, so yeah, you can get some fancy shapes. However, I bought these and I was like, yeah, proper carbide ones, you know, I was probably proper happy. But have you seen the size of the shaft on them? Way too big for my uh, router. So yeah, them's gonna stay shiny for a while. Under here, what else we got? This is a um, uh, blowtorch, another awesome uh, tool. Um, bought this to preheat any of the thick aluminium because we're gonna be using some Temberley stuff. So, so I've been a really, really busy guy recently. Um, I'll turn the camera around again and I'll show you uh, how far we're getting with the frame, some of the issues I've got with it. Uh, it's causing us an absolute nightmare, but I absolutely love it. This is what I live and breathe for. So I'll turn the camera around, I'll show you the frame and explain some of the stuff. So firstly, uh, you might have to excuse some of my welds. Some of these are all right though. I'm definitely getting there. Uh, Better at doing this aluminium welding thing. Uh, they're not fantastic, this one looks all right though. You know, they're gonna get better. Uh, so basically this is my aluminium frame. It's built with uh, 6082 aluminium and uh, it's three milli thick. I bent this, all these shapes here in my little brake press that I built. Um, nice and straight, you can see, you know, quite good. Uh, obviously the welds need tidying up and whatnot. Some of the things I've been learning while I've been doing the TIG welding stuff, you see here. This tends to be, see how it's burnt off the corner here. This seems to be because uh, the amps were too low. Uh, but then on the, on the other hand, I do ones like that, which look a lot tidier. So yeah, it's something that I'm learning anyways. Uh, the inside here, it's got an angle of, uh, this is 1.5. And the idea is, is I'm gonna put some 1.5 in here. And that means we'll just have a tiny little lip just over the corner here. So I'm really, really excited to do that. Uh, turn the frame around this side. So this is, let's give you a better idea. This is what the frame's going to look like. And I've got, I think it's this bit of pipe. And this is going to end up being in the yoke there. This is proper DIY bike at its absolute max, I think personally. You'll have to leave your comments, guys. Um, there's been quite a few people asking about how strong it's going to be. Uh, I guess I'm going to have to do a little bit of research and development if uh, you know I sell a few of these things. I think, to be honest, I'll be the person trial and testing this. I am going to build Emma one of these, but I'm thinking uh, if I'm going to build Emma one, then I'll build mine first because I've already got the parts. I'm out of cash at the minute, so I can't really buy Emma a Dorna bike to start building her frame. So uh, I've got all the bits and all my parts are going to go on here. I'm not 100% sure that my battery is going to fit. If you remember it on this bike, see how big the battery is? <clears throat> and it doesn't actually come out of this hole. Uh, so I had to put the lid on it. <clears throat> it's all dusty, it's been a while since I've been out. I had to put the lid on to get the battery out. So you can see it's a, a fairly sized battery in there. Uh, so hopefully it's going to fit in the frame. But if not, you might have to see is rebuild that battery. and. Uh, That'll be another adventure, but this is what I mean, guys. What have I bloody started? But I'm loving it. Uh, dimensions inside of here, from the tape measure through, so you can uh, get an idea how wide this one is. So we've got oops, 140 inside. Uh, one or two years is asked is if I could build a frame that's like, you know, could hold a mega battery, like one twice the size of the one in there. Uh, what I would do, guys, I would still build the frame the same. However, I'll just make this part wider. So if you wanted more batteries inside, I mean, this is, where is this? We've got down here, we've got 200. 
uh, to that corner and then sit, I think it was 400 I measured up. Sorry for the thing. So that's 400 to this corner here. That's a length of, wait, I think it's about 360 for 20S battery. Do, we'll do 370, give it a little bit of room. Somewhere there, so we've got and 100 at the top. That's if it's 360 by, uh, you know, that's a, whatever it is. You guys can work out the battery size. It's kind of massive anyway. Uh, but if you wanted more, you know, more battery capacity, I could always just make this frame wider, put the same sort of sides on, uh, give you an idea. I haven't actually done it myself yet. I don't even know where it's gone. You can see I've got that many things lying about in here. Uh, <coughs> I've seen this, so I'm just going to pick this up to show you. So this is some of the frame idea here with the, the seat on. And uh, if I lay the swing, I've got the swing arm belt as well. Sorry, I haven't got the swing arm belt. I've got part of the swing arm belt. Can you see it? Oh, there you go. Right, he's got it in his bed. So this is the swing arm I've made. And uh, this is going to lie like here. It's not well you can see it there, but somewhere like this. I think it's going to look absolutely brilliant. It's going to be like literally three times as light as this bike, um, the red one over there. The swing arm, um, I will weigh it when I've built this because you can see here I've got um, the little dropouts, uh, dropouts here to put in and I'm going to fold this in and weld it and make it look all pretty. Uh, another question that I've been asked about doing these, uh, can I not make this wider, you know, for a big fat bike tyre? And obviously I could make this wider, that's not limited at all. This is just the right size for my bike. So if you do end up buying one of these frames, I can literally just, you know, I can make that any size that you want to. Uh, for the ones like Emma's, when I bought Emma's bike, so literally on my bike, it's 150, I think, on here, 155 mil. On Emma's, it's 130, so her, the middle of her wheel would like come here. Uh, would leave too much space. So what I'm going to do is I'll take the angle out, I'll take some of the angle out of that and we'll bring it back so it's 135 so it would suit uh, a lower powered wheel which I think is the way forward. I'm really excited to do Emma's bike. It's just a shame that you know, I'm out of cash at the minute and I've got other things to buy. Uh, <clears throat> I will finish these projects, it's just going to take us a few weeks. Oh my god, I've been uh, loving it, like honest to god guys. You know, I live and breathe metal at work. Do you know, like I've been doing it now for like 20 odd year, I guess. And, you know, it's brilliant to work with a different material. It's exciting learning something new. Um, even though I'm a welder, you know, I know what a weld pool looks like, but it still takes a little while to, you know, get my eye in for the aluminium welding, uh, learn about, you know, burning the tungsten, making it rounded off. You know, there's a bit, a few, a few bits and pieces that you just got to learn. And it's been a, a brilliant learning uh, curve so far. If any of you have got any more questions about uh, aluminium frames and what they're going to look like, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, if any of you have got any questions about aluminium frames and what they're going to look like, you know, uh, just subscribe and you'll see them week by week progress. Uh, if any of you have got any questions about the welding or, you know, any of the materials or, you know, just ask us guys, you know, I'll not bite on it, you know, I might ignore you. So, uh, yeah, please like, share and boom, subscribe. Yeah.